So my rent is due in 30 days and I'm only a new Roblox developer with three months of scripting experience, no coding background, no game development background. I think I'm screwed. Uh, if I don't build a successful Roblox game in 30 days, I'll straight up be broke and homeless. So subscribe to find out if I actually make it to day 30 as a Roblox millionaire or if I end up sleeping at my local 7-Eleven dumpster. Okay, so this is day seven of making a Roblox game in 30 days to pay my rent. Last video, I said that I was thinking about making the lobby the next video, but we've been doing a lot of building lately. So I think I want to get back into the scripting and the functionality of the game right now and the weapons. Someone in my Discord channel recommended that I use a hitbox module because it's more accurate than just simple touched events. And after doing some research, I saw how good of an idea that was. So I'm going to go ahead and implement this hitbox module. That way, all of our weapons going forward can utilize that and it will result in more accurate hitboxes for the fighting gameplay. So let's get started on that. All right, so I know y'all didn't sign up for a yap fest, but I think this is really important. I've got a couple questions with this and it is how I use ChatGBT to help me develop scripts. I think part of using it correctly is what's helped me learn so fast. So I should just preface this by saying ChatGBT cannot make your game for you. You need a deep understanding of the basics because whenever you ask ChatGBT to make you a script, one of the issues is it'll do a lot more than you asked. It'd be doing too much, okay? Like you'll ask ChatGBT to do something simple, like make me a kill brick. And then it'll come out with this script and say, okay, here's a kill brick. Oh, and by the way, this brick can also make you a Subway sandwich and suck your toes. And you're like, what? I didn't ask for all that. I just wanted a kill brick. And now I have this giant script that I have to edit down. I could have made this quicker myself and my toes are wet. And if you don't have deep scripting knowledge, then you won't even know that ChatGBT is adding a bunch of useless stuff or just completely incorrect old and outdated stuff because it's its knowledge base is, is broad and it's not just based on what works now. That's not even the main problem with ChatGBT. Like, let's say you give it the most fire prompt and it gives you, you know, exactly what you need in a script and the script runs. Like, best case scenario, it gives you exactly what you need and it runs, right? Okay, now what? How do you effectively connect it with your game and with your other scripts? You don't know. And and if you ask ChatGBT, it just gets super messy. It doesn't work. So now you might be asking, well then is there even a point in using ChatGBT? And the answer is yes. I found it super effective at troubleshooting. I'll explain. Every developer knows that when you're creating a script and you run it and 99% of the time, if it's a complicated script, it's not gonna work right away. You're gonna need to troubleshoot it. There's gonna be errors, it's nasty. And locating those errors, you can use print statements, you can use other methods to figure out what's not running and why. And and it takes a lot of time to troubleshoot. I found ChatGBT speeds that process 10 times because you can feed it your script and you can feed it the error in your output. Ask ChatGBT to point you in the right direction of what's going wrong. And 99% of the time, it's sped up my fixing of scripts because it points me in the right direction that would have taken me maybe 10, 20, 30 minutes to figure out this small thing that's going wrong. So of course, ChatGBT, along with pointing you in the right direction, it'll also be be like, here's the fix, blah, 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 and print you a whole new script. Don't use that script. Just let it point you in the right direction and use your own knowledge to fix your own script. That's how you'll get better. And that's how you'll make scripts that you can edit in the future and connect with other scripts to make your full game. All right, but that's enough yapping. Let's continue day seven.
I thought it would be a good idea to provide some commentary on what I'm doing here. So here I'm using object-oriented programming, or the idea of object-oriented programming, which is basically a, a way of structuring your code so that it is easily reusable, it's modular, and it allows you to be able to create some sort of object, and in this case, like a weapon, in the matter of minutes. So if I were to just create separate scripts and functionality for every single sword that I make, it would take up a lot of scripts, it would take a long time to write up each sword, but if you, if you go about it in the object-oriented way, then you can make something called a class and you can make method something called methods and attributes for that class that cover all of the functionality of a sword and then all you would have to do is create a new object and use that blueprint that you've created to set up things like animations damage and things like that so it's it's gonna allow me to basically print out weapons and not create separate functionality for every single melee weapon that I make hopefully that makes sense and if you like the more commentary style video where I show you my progress and I also make comments on it and just share some thoughts that I have, please let me know in the comments down below. Okay, so I got the music working. My brain's fried right now, so I, I'm just scripting super slowly. I want to get more done. Somebody in my comment section said that they want to see more progress being done to the game. I'm trying, man. I'm trying to make more progress to this game, okay? But it requires me to stay up super late, and I can't always do that. I don't, I'm not feeling burnout yet, but some of these long days, I do feel mental fatigue. I'm gonna work on getting this uh, this music button in into the GUI so that it's like permanently, I'll probably do like bottom left corner or something like that. It's permanently there so we can mute the music whenever. So yeah, let's get that done now and then see how tired I feel. I might stop or I might keep going.
Okay, so the GUI part of it works, but it doesn't actually mute the music, so let me go ahead and fix that real quick. Okay, so now we can mute the music and start it back up. Cool. The problem was we, even though the sounds, even though the music was inside of the main music sound group, they, I guess each one of these soundtracks has a sound group routing property that you just needed to set to the actual sound group that it's in. All right, so that's gonna be it for tonight's video. I am happy with what I got done with the weapon framework. Now it's gonna be like, I'm gonna be straight up printing out weapons. It's gonna be so easy now that we have this object oriented framework. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any suggestions again, please uh, leave a comment. Feel free to join the Discord and shoot me a, a DM and, and let me know if you have any cool ideas for the game. But thank you.